Graham Rising Soul Siblings is Chase Seeking from American Aborigines Unchained here on YouTube and Facebook. Um, and yeah, so, you know, we were going into uh, the storyline or whatever with the book. And I decided I want to get straight to the point of the book that uh, really resonates with me um, on a different level. Um, and it is when this person, Elijah, comes into the book. Um, and again, I'm just going to kind of skim through a little bit, um, uh, with this person is coming into town, um, for whatever reason. And he ends up meeting this girl, Esther. Um, and then they end up having the discussion about some things that was going on with her, um, that her father really didn't want her to, um, be dealing with, um, second sight or, uh, whatever, um, can't remember what it is. Automatic writing, I think, right? Sorry. Um, and so she ends up meeting this guy and this is how the story goes. And maybe we can talk about how it kind of uh, resonates with me today in the whole storyline. So I'm just going to go through, <clears throat> I'm going to skip through um, and just go through parts that I feel, you know, stand out. Okay. So um, the lady, uh, Miss Robbins um, says that Elijah has um, telephone and he's coming out for the weekend with Professor uh, Shantland um, and his daughter. Uh, she looks in the basket and the person named Ira, okay, which I think is her husband. Um, let's see, it says maybe they'll motor or trolley. Um, and then he says, who is Shantland? Um, and Ms. Robbins um, says, Shantland, my dear, is, prof is professor of the psychology, no, let's stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, psychology um, in the university, the head of your son's department, a gentleman whose name it would be well for you not to forget more than seven or eight times. So Ira says, hmm. Well, I'll be glad to meet him. Good thing Elijah um, on such good terms with him, bringing him out over Sunday, right? <laughs> okay, so, excuse me, hold one second. Okay, I hope I ain't put all my business in your face. Um, so anyways, as I'm reading, I'm gonna go ahead and make some points what I wanna point out. Um, mm, about things, okay? So I'm just gonna mark things that I need to go back to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and read through and then I'm gonna bring these points up to you guys and how they relate, I feel, in real life today. So it says, Miss Robbins um, says, um, it won't hurt his chances of promotion, uh, though he'd never think of that. And then Ira says, Elijah's got plenty of brains and no sense. I'm not saying uh, where he gets his no sense. He gets his brains from his father. It says, um, Mrs. Robin says, must have got all of his, all his father had, okay? Ira says, is he sweet on the professor's daughter? Miss Robin says, he didn't seem much taken with her at the uh, faculty reception. Um, Esther is well, mm, a bit of a wallflower, right? So again, you know, just to put out, uh, just to make a small point um, about that, um, you know, I would look at myself as somewhat of a um, wallflower, like somebody that just kind of sits off to the side. I'm involved, I will get involved, but again, I don't like the spotlight. I like to just do my own thing. Um, I'm more um, of an introvert in a sense. And I don't know, that's just me. So, um, <clears throat> So anyway, um, Ira says, is she ugly? And Miss Robin says, no. And Ira says, high brow. <clears throat> Again, I don't know wh whatever, if that means like bougie or I don't know what it means, I don't know. Um, and it says, Miss Robin's uh, not for Elijah, okay? Um, and Ira says, what then? Miss Robin says, Oh, queer. And then Ira says, what about? Miss Robin says, I don't know exactly. Her mother changes the subject and her father uses long words. 
uh, from around, um, and then I guess what's going on is from around the house appears Professor Shetland. Um, and it said he's a tall man, about 45, physically powerful, spiritually arid, and uh, embodiment of unimaginative uh, science. He wears a short beard and dresses like a not too well-to-do small town businessman. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chanting, lifting his hat, the robins, uh, okay, chant, chanting, uh, lifting his hat, the robins country place, question mark. Miss Robbins says, why, uh, Professor Shantland, uh, how do you do? And she goes to meet him. I'm so glad to see you. I suppose you have forgotten that we met, we met at the faculty uh, reception. And Shantland says, yes, I remember. Well, I'm glad I found the place. Miss Robin says, did you come all by yourself? And Shantland says, the others walk, uh, wanted to walk. Um, I thought the exercise would be good for Esther's nerves. So I came alone on a trolley. Now, again, this trolley is making me think that it's something physical, but at the same time, it kind of reminds me of something that might be mm, some other form of travel. I don't know by time or, you know, it just makes me think of some other kind of travel. <clears throat> and it said, I thought they'd be here. Um, they started soon after the luncheon. Miss Robin says, how is your daughter now? Shantland says, uh, why, uh, quite well, thank you. And Ira says, who's, uh, who's signal, oh, no, Ira, whose signal for uh, introduction have been overlooked. I'm glad to meet you, sir. He offers his hand. Miss Robbins says, Mr. Robbins, Mr. Shetland. Okay. Shantland, please, uh, Shantland says, please, um, I'm sure. Ira says, let me take your satchel. Shantland retaining it. Oh, it's not heavy. Um, I have some work in it. Mr. Um, Elijah Robbins told me you would give me a room off by myself and not think me ungracious if I stuck in it and get some proofs read. Okay. So then Ms. Robbins says, I'll have a perfectly solitary room ready for you in five minutes. Shantland says, thank you. She goes in, takes the market basket. Shantland sits down his bag. Uh, you have a pleasant place here. Ira says, um, hope you won't be too busy to have a look at it. Shantland says, a spring, question mark, right in the doorway. He crosses into it. Uh, Do you use this water? Is what he asks. Ira says, my family have been using this, uh, using it for 200 years. Now, I'll just stop and say here, because we're going to get around to it. So this, uh, Ira saying that the family uh, has been using the spring for 200 years. F for me, okay, <laughs> this could be a physical spring or a source of water. But at the end of the day, um, I feel like what he's referring to is a certain bloodline or a certain family or a certain group of people that um, one family have been using for... Um, lineage or some type of breeding. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to use that term, but that's what they would have called it at that time. Um, but going into a certain ancestral line to create a certain group of individuals, okay, is what I feel, okay? <clears throat> and it says, um, and that didn't hit me until like a couple of weeks ago when I kind of skimmed through the book again. Um, well, probably last week, okay, because I'm bad with time. So it says, two, so Shantland says 200, and he says, how can that be when the country has only been settled only 20, uh, only 75, right? So again, this, <clears throat> you know, uh, what, this is 1813, I think, um, at this point, or either uh, somewhere around the 1913 or something like that. I mean, uh, yeah, so I don't know, okay? So Ira says, uh, did you know that, oh, Old Black Hawk adopted my grandfather Elijah Robbins. He lived in the Salk, or the yeah Salk. We'll just call it the Salk <laughs> uh, tribe for three years. Now again, this is reminding me of something biblical. Um, and then also when I look at three years, it could be three years, but it can also be thirty. 
Because I think that if these people knew how to speak the language, I doubt that they learned it all like that in three years. So I think that it might be more so referring to, oh, oh my feet. Um, I think it might be more so referring to, uh, you know, uh, 30 years. And it kind of sounds like a biblical uh, story. I can't remember who it is that lived with somebody. There's a couple of people that lived with somebody for 30 years or whatnot. And so, you know, um, oh, shit, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's just what I was thinking. So, um, so this person was adopted into the tribe. And then another person they reminded me was, was, um, I don't know, just like in general, the storyline reminded me first off, it hit me as, is this a storyline about like Elijah Muhammad or somebody like this, right? <clears throat> so anyhow, because I feel like the story is following a real storyline. Okay. So it says, um, but I feel like it's somebody else now, but they could still be through lineage that we don't know of or we're not aware of that other people over us that may be watching us or watching this whole thing play out may know. Okay, so it says, um, Ira says, uh, the one you know is Elijah the Third. What an interesting link with the history of this region. So again, you know, the history of the region, the history of that soil, that land, the trees uh, represent groups again in my eyes right so it says ira um says yes elijah first elijah first taught me um it's now he says it's language um i, I don't know if it's the region <laughs> but again what is a region if you look it up in etymology is it going to say that it is what we call it today like a group a portion of land or something like that or is it going to be something else um, is it going to be leading me more towards thinking that we're talking about actual uh, people or something of that nature? Not sure. So Chantland says the Indian language, um, that's an unusual accomplishment. Uh, have you kept it? Um, Iris says, well, no, not systematically, but it's um, odd. Sometimes I dream and, and saw, and I keep wanting to say Sue, okay? And saw. Um, I dream I'm up there on the hill between the grave of Elijah and the grave of Black Hawk's grandfather. And well, I'm supposed, uh, I suppose that's too long. Um, my wife is opposed to telling dreams. Okay. So again, you know, this kind of stood out to me because um, we're, we're talking about those trees. Um, it's just something about the trees in the yard. It's something about the trees in the area that resonate with me. And, you know, I'm just wondering if, Again, knowing that this could have been some kind of uh, place where something like this might have occurred, really, like maybe even on the land that my house is on, you know, and, and all the feelings and all the uh, things and the energies that I've been dealing with the past couple of weeks, I'm almost wondering if that's really close to where, you know, I am. So um, <clears throat> anyway, Shantlin, uh glad to be uh, spared the dream. Um, says, I had no idea there was any such continuous chain of life in this new country. So again, and again, we have to remember that people were moving about. And again, I'm sorry, y'all. This, this is one of the reasons why I, I try not to be on here, but you know, they are who they are and they are here. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Shantland, uh, glad to be uh, spared the dream. He, oh yeah, he didn't have any idea. Okay, and Ira says, um, it isn't all new. Take the stump, okay? My grandfather cut that tree in 1843. Now, we'll just stop there because the stump, right? So I started looking, it, it, something was just pulling me into thinking, okay, now I, knew, I know about the tree stump that is by the house, but also, and actually, it started to make me think about like a stump as a tree or a family tree that had been cut because again, I'm someone who, and again, I'm pretty sure a lot of us are that have a hard time with gene um, genealogy and things like this, because there's a lot of um, things that have been altered or changed or just incomplete or just topsy turf is going back and forth and you can't really, you know, put your finger on it. So to me, it made me think like someone is talking about they came into a certain uh, ancestry or a family tree or a heritage heir. So, um, again, um, 
that that would be like the people being of a certain group or uh, so-called race, but then another entity or another group or another somebody came in and mixed with that uh, tree. And so it changed or altered, which a tree stump would be a tree that used to be a tree, but it's been altered and now it's a stump, um, you know, in a sense. That's just my, what my mind's eye is telling me. Um, and again, there was a lot of that going on around uh, in the 1800s because, again, I think what Reconstruction and things like that had to do with more with uh, bloodlines and things like that than we think. Um, that first year there, uh, that's 1455. Uh, Wait, sorry. That's 1455. So, again, that was reminding me of the whole 1421 um, when we we're talking about, uh, what was it, uh, when... Uh, what China or another group of Asians uh, were supposedly had come into um, the Americas prior to Columbus. So anyway, Shantland says, well, 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 uh, before Columbus sailed. Uh, oh, OK, I'm sorry. I thought I heard something. Uh, what are these? And then Ira says, um, they're nail heads. I drove them to mark certain years. That's the year that Black Hawk, uh, of Black Hawk's War. Um, there's the year Elijah joined the, the Salt Nation. Um, and Shantland says, and this one? And Ira says, 1492. There's the Mayflower. Um, that's the Mayflower year. Hmm. To see it here still in a, a ring of wood, okay, um, the wonder of it, okay? So again, this made me think about something else too, something about a ring or a, I was reading something, I don't know, because I'm, I'm a random random seeker and I just pull from a lot of different, the, the energy sends me in a place and I just go there for the information and then it's like confirmation to a certain extent. But I was just reading something about a girl that how does she still have these rings on her head or something or on her face or rings, something about these rings or whatever. And so I was just thinking like, okay, just like a tree does have rings or you can tell how old it is by looking at it that way. But again, which way are we looking at it in this storyline? Um, so again, it will be wondering how can someone still have some kind of genetic makeup code or something that is so, uh, 